Hi everyone, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Beeple University. Today we'll be teaching you how to play Steam Up, A Feast of Dim Sum. Game by Pauline Kong, Marie Wong and Heyman Lee. And published by Hot Banana Games and Guff Studios. Let's get to the game! In Steam Up, players are different animals from the Chinese Zodiac, competing against each other to have the heartiest feast of dim sum. Players will collect tokens and cards while manipulating the table into a position of their favour, all to take the best steamers from the display to fulfil their appetites and earn points. After a certain number of steamers have been claimed or rounds have been played, whoever has scored the most hearty points is the winner. To set up, lay the board on the table, rotating the centre so that the two orange arrows line up. Take the double-sided feast zone indicator, which matches your player count, and then place it around the rotating portion, again lining up the orange line. Players all choose different areas as delineated by the feast zone ring as their personal feast zones. You should sit nearest your own feast zone, or you can use these coloured tokens, placing one in the feast zone and keeping the other, to keep track of who owns which feast zone. With two players, you must choose adjacent feast zones, not opposing ones. Now you'll set up the food. You'll have all of these components with the standard version of the game. The larger circular tokens are called food tokens, and this is what you'll be using to buy dim sum during the game. The smaller irregularly shaped pieces are the dim sum pieces, and this is what you'll be trying to buy. If you have the deluxe squishy upgrades, these replace the dim sum pieces, not the food tokens. And we'll be using these upgrades in this video. Place the food tokens and lucky die beside the board and put all of the dim sum pieces into the cloth bag. Now set up the 18 steamers. Split them into three sets of six and then drawing randomly from the bag, place two dim sum into each steamer from the first group, three into each steamer from the second group and four into each steamer from the third group. You will still have a number of dim sum pieces left, which remain in the bag. Now mix up all of the steamers, and as best you can without looking at them, place them in stacks of three onto the six spaces of the turntable. To set up the scoreboard, place the steamer counter on the space matching your player count, shuffle and place the entire deck of fortune cards, and shuffle the deck of fate cards and then deal 18 of them out into a deck here. If you want a friendlier game, remove any cards with this asterisk in the bottom right corner before this step. Each player is dealt two animal boards and chooses one to play. For your first game, it's recommended to choose one with the cup of tea icon. Find your score marker and place it at zero on the scoreboard. Take your animal's starting resources. The circle represents food tokens, and the rectangle represents fortune cards drawn from the deck. Choose a first player who takes the chili oil token, and you're now ready to play. The aim of the game is to eat the heartiest meal of dim sum that you can, by acquiring dim sum pieces and placing them onto your animal board. You'll gain points based on the numbers that you cover, and you may gain bonus points based on how your board is laid out. Here, for example, the food blogger gets three bonus points for every column which is filled. While the seafood lover simply gains more points for dumplings or sticky rice than the other types. The primary way you'll do this is by gaining steamers from the table. Doing this requires you to rotate the table so that that steamer is in your feast zone and to collect and spend food tokens which exactly match the dim sum in that steamer. So, understanding that, let's have a look at the flow of play. Steam Up is played in rounds. Each round, except for the first, begins by flipping over one Fate card and resolving it. This will have an effect which may be resolved by all players or one player, and may be immediate or last the length of the round. 
you'll skip this step in round one. Then each player will take one turn, starting with the current first player and going clockwise around the table. On your turn, you must take two actions. There are five different actions available in the game, and you must choose two different actions. You may resolve them in any order. First, you may gain one food token. Simply take any one of the available food tokens from their stacks and add it to your collection. There's no limit to the number you may hold. If supply of a food token ever runs out, then it's considered sold out, and no one can gain that token again until another player has spent some and returned them to the supply. Your second option is draw and rotate. First, you must draw the top fortune card from the deck into your hand. Keep your cards secret from the other players, and there is no limit to the number of cards you can hold. You may then optionally rotate the turntable, 90 degrees either to the left or to the right. The arrows should line up with the dotted lines once you're done with your movement. Doing this changes which steamers are available in your feast zone. The third option is to play and rotate. First, you must choose one card from your hand and then play it for its effect. In most cases, you'll resolve the ability on the card, then discard it. In some cases, you'll play the card face up in front of yourself. And this will remain there until the effect on the card is fully resolved. These could be passive abilities which are in effect while the card is there, or delayed abilities which resolve at a later specific time. Then, as was the case for the last action, you may optionally rotate the turntable 90 degrees to the left or to the right. Your fourth option is exchange. Discard any two fortune cards from your hand without resolving the abilities printed on them. Then gain any one food token from the supply. Remember that you must select two different actions on your turn, so doing this is often the only way to gain two tokens on one turn. The fifth and final option is to purchase a steamer. First, choose a steamer which is on top of its stack and in your feast zone, either partially or entirely. Right now, these two steamers are the ones available to the green player. Next, spend food tokens which exactly match the dim sum in the steamer you're purchasing, returning those tokens to the supply stacks. Now, take the steamer, revealing the one beneath it. Take all of your newly purchased dim sum and fill them from left to right in their matching rows of your animal board. Gain hardy points equal to each number covered, so here it would be a total of three points. Also resolve any bonus points or bonus abilities from your player board which trigger at this point. If you ever gain dim sum and there's no room for it on one of your tracks, simply collect it next to your player board. It scores nothing on its own, but still counts towards certain other cards and effects in the game. Finally, move the steamer counter one step down on this track. When the steamer track reaches zero, or the last fate card is drawn from the deck, then the end of the game is triggered, and it is the final round. Finish this round, and then add up your final scores, making these two adjustments. Firstly, for every two leftover fortune cards in hand, gain one point. Then for every two food tokens left in hand, lose one point. Our restaurant reserves the right to charge you more for food you ordered but did not eat. The player with the highest score wins. If tied, the player who collected the most total dim sum pieces breaks the tie, and if still tied, victory is shared. Before finishing, we'll take you through a few specific scenarios you may encounter in the game. Many cards refer to the player with the fewest hearty points. And if tied, the card may tell you what to do in the case of a tie. If the card does not tell you how to break a tie, then the default is to break the tie in favour of the player latest in current turn order, that is, furthest clockwise from the current first player. 
If a simultaneous effect for multiple players is triggered but the order matters, for example taking the last of a food token before it's sold out, you'll resolve those effects in the current turn order starting from the first player. Some abilities require the rolling of the lucky die, either to find a specific type of dim sum or to roll a number. If the ability requires the players to roll to see who rolls highest, then re-roll to break any ties. The die includes one blank face, which has no dim sum, and the number zero instead of the unlucky number four. This is not re-rolled if you roll it. Some abilities let you gain or swap dim sum, as distinct from food tokens. All of your dim sum will be placed on your board, or to the side if the row is full. So anytime you gain dim sum, you put it straight on your board, gaining the points exactly as you would have if you'd purchased a steamer, and when you give up dim sum, you lose the points that you uncover. You don't lose any other bonuses that you might have gained when you originally placed that dim sum, but you have to remember that you can't claim that bonus again if you were to qualify for it again. The first player token never changes hands automatically. It's only passed around if a card comes into effect that moves it. Some effects allow you to move steamers to other stacks or rearrange the stacks. The only restriction on doing this is there cannot be more than five steamers in a single stack. Finally, there are some cards and abilities which let you take dim sum from the steamers without taking a purchase steamer action. If one of these ever empties a steamer, then remove that steamer from the table and count it down as usual. And that's how to play Steam Up A Feast Of Dim Sum. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you find this video useful, Please help us by hitting that like button. Subscribe to us. You can also hit the meeple in the corner to do that and hit the bell icon so you'll know when we have new videos. You can also follow me on Instagram for my board games journey. Comments, suggestions and feedback are all welcome in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.